Okay guys, here's what we're going to do. Um, we've been doing the unit circle and we've been talking about how to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of all of our different points on the unit circle. But now what we're going to do is we're going to translate this into a two-dimensional graph and the values, the radian values that we have on our unit circle, what they're going to become, they're going to become the x values, the x coordinates on our graphs. Um, so I want you to think about when you graph something in the xy coordinate plane, you know, you have an x value, you have a y value. The x value is going to become, you know, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, um, and then repeat that cycle because we're talking about periodic functions. And so I want you to get used to that x, that x axis being uh, those coordinates not just one two three four like you're so used to but they're going to be pi over six they're going to be pi over four they're going to be pi over three pi over two uh, and then we'll jump into two pi over three we'll jump into three pi over four five pi over six and then eventually pi and so that's what we're doing today <clears throat> and what we're going to focus on today is the graph of the sine function and remember, it's very important that you remember that the sine function is a periodic function. So over the interval or the period of 2 pi, this function is going to repeat some y values. And so that's what I want you to remember today. And so we're going to translate, basically we're going to translate the unit circle into a two-dimensional xy coordinate plane graph. Okay. Um, and so first off the sine function what it does is it matches the measure of the angle in the standard position which we've talked about for the past week with the y coordinates only so I want you to think about if you think about uh, you know pi over 6 what is the y coordinate well that's 1 half if you think about pi over 4 what's the y coordinate that's root 2 over 2 um, if you think about pi over 3 what's the y coordinate that's root 3 over 2 and so then you get to pi over 2 which is kinda at the top of that circle well it has a y coordinate of 1 and then what happens when we get into quadrant 2 then those y values start to decrease and they start to approach back to 0 okay and so um, what we're going to see in a minute is we'll see a table of values and we'll be able to see it more clearly in a two-dimensional plane and um, you'll see where at pi over 2 it maxes out at 1 and then at 3 pi over 2 it actually it minimalizes out at uh, negative 1 and so really what happens is is our range of the sine function goes from negative 1 to 1 and you'll see that in just a minute but just kind of you know previewing you for it later on our range is going to be from negative 1 to 1 for our sine function okay and then we'll create what's called a sine curve and that's just what represents the graph of our sine function and then just you know to recap what we've talked about before is that the sine of theta when we're talking about our unit circle it's the y coordinate on all those points that we've memorized through the unit circle and that we learned on the terminal side of the angle okay so if we think back to our unit circle let's fill this chart out real quick so the period of the sine function is 2 pi and that's very important to remember is that the period of the sine function is 2 pi okay so we're gonna graph our function from 0 to 2 pi so we're gonna make tables from our unit circle and so what happens is you think to the unit circle you think about on the let's think about the 3 o'clock position when x equals 0 what does the y value equal? Well, that equals 0 as well. Okay? And then as we jump to pi over 6, think about those coordinates. The y coordinate, because we're talking about sine here, the y coordinate is 1 half. And then as we jump to pi over 3, notice we skip pi over 4. Really not, really not relevant right now. Um, because it just equals, uh, when we're talking about sine, it's root 2 over 2. And so when we jump to pi over 3, that's root 3 over 2. And then finally we jump to pi over 2, which again is think about the 12 o'clock position on a on an analog clock. That's going to be a y value of 1. Now it's important to remember 
that this right here is our max. This is as far as our range is going to get here. That's as far as it's going to get. And then what's going to happen is, is we're going to drop back down. Remember, we get to quadrant 2. Okay, so sine is still positive. Cosine is now negative, and we'll talk about the cosine graph later. But that's going to be root 3 over 2. And then we jump down to 5 pi over 6. That's going to be 1 half. And then at pi, our y value is 0. So we're jumping into a periodic function uh, where our y values repeat. Then what happens is now we've covered all the positive y values. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to cover into negative y values here. So now it really repeats those values, but now they're negative. So we just repeat everything here. And again, I'm going to highlight the fact that this is now this is now our minimum here. And then we repeat again, so that's negative root 3 over 2. And that's negative 1 half. And then finally we end up back at 2 pi, which is our starting position. So our y value is equal to 0. So they want us to state the intervals of x where the y values are increasing. Now if you look, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit here. If you go through and you calculate what all these fractions equal. So this is 0.5, and I'm doing this in yellow right here. I'm going to zoom in. Then if you do root 3 over 2, that actually equals 0.87. And then obviously this is equal to 1. And then this drops back down to 0.87. And this drops back down to 0.5. And then finally we drop back down to 0. So they want to know, well, where are your intervals of x increasing? Well, remember, when we talk about intervals of increasing, we need to include the brackets. Okay, so from 0 to really pi over 2, remember you use the x coordinates, we increase. But then you need to remember, well, from 3 pi over 2 all the way up to 2 pi, we're still increasing 2. So we need to include those as well. And what I'm going to do, think back to the unit circle. I'm going to draw a little sketch over here. You got your unit circle here. Now, I'm going to highlight in red where we should be increasing. And so if you look, we talk about where we are increasing from the y values, because we're talking about the sine graph, the y values increase from here to here. That's 0 to pi over 2. Now, in green, you see it's decreasing. The y values are getting smaller. That's decreasing. If we go back again, it's they're still, the y values are decreasing. So all that in green is decreasing. Then we jump back to red from here. So really in quadrant 4 and in quadrant 1, sine is increasing. In quadrant 2 and in quadrant 3, sine is decreasing. So then in part C they ask, well, where, where are the intervals of x where the y values are decreasing? We've already talked about that, really. It's all that green arrow right here. So remember, if you think back to your unit circle, this is pi over 2. This is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. All that green arrow, green section that you see, that's all decreasing in terms of the sine function, which is the y values. So what happens is they say, well, where are you decreasing from? Well, that's going to be from pi over 2 all the way to 3 pi over 2. Those are all your decreasing values. And then finally, they want you to state the maximum points and the minimum points. Well, the maximum point, we're talking about the y value, the maximum point occurs here. Maximum point occurs here at pi over 2. 
So when we state the maximum point, what happens is when we're stating the maximum point, we state the x value, that's pi over 2, and that's a value of 1. And then the minimum point. is where is it negative one well that's down here at three pi over two that's where the y value is the, is the smallest which again when you're on the unit circle the radius is negative one or one so the minimum point is three pi over two negative one so let's jump on ahead and let's talk about how we create this graph of the sine function. So what we have, we're trying to we're trying to graph our sine function here. So to sketch our graph, remember it's a periodic function, so that's where we repeat y values. Okay, and that's going to be the same for the sine and the cosine. And so I want you to remember how to create five key points, and the five key points is we want to find the intercept. Where does it cross that x-axis? And then where is the maximum value? Where does this function top out at? Again, we're going to find. So, so here's the intercept. Then here's the maximum here where I'm drawing this red dot now. Here's another intercept, and in this case, it's at pi. And then here is another minimum at 3 pi over 2 in this particular case because it has a value of negative 1. And then finally, you enter up at another intercept at 2 pi. So to recap, the intercepts are where the y value equals 0 and then the maximum is where the y value equals 1. The minimum is where the y value equals negative 1. And so I want to verify the fact it's so important that you realize for this first one the intercept here is zero zero okay and then for pi over two that's our maximum which is a value of one pi over two and one and then when we get back to pi back to an intercept of zero. Notice the the correlation here. Every time you have an intercept your y value equals zero. And then finally we reach a minimum of 3 pi over 2. That's the x coordinate and that's negative 1. And then finally we're at 2 pi with a y value of zero. Okay? And so that's how we're going to graph our sine function here. Okay, and that's important to remember the sine function begins at 0, 0. And then at pi over 2, we reach our maximum. At pi, we reach another intercept of 0. At 3 pi over 2, we reach a minimum of negative 1. And at 2 pi, we reach another intercept of 0. Okay? And so these next properties we're going to talk about are very important for you to carry on um, through the rest of this unit and, and forward. So it's important to remember because of our sine function, it's periodic. The domain is going to continue to remain from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, it's just going to keep repeating. So it's periodic. It continues forever. We've talked about the amplitude that's the absolute value of the value of a and you'll see where this comes into play later on when we talk about what the function of sine looks like 
okay we've already talked about the key points that's the intercept in this case is zero zero we've talked about the max we talked about being power over two and one we talk about another intercept then we talk about a min which is three pi over two and negative one and then finally we talk about another intercept which is two pi over zero okay the range the range of any sine function before any dilations is going to be from negative one to one and then the period we'll talk about this later but the period is going to be 2 pi sorry 2 pi over b and we'll talk about that later um, when we talk about what the function of a sine looks like as far as algebraically but this is going to be one of the most important um, expressions and equations that you use is to find the period of any sine function it's going to be 2 pi over b okay so just get used to seeing that we'll talk about that later but it's going to be very good so now the graph and variations let's talk about if we have sine of x we're going to use our five key points which we mentioned earlier remember these five key points right here okay go back to this five key points we got one two three four five we're going to use that to apply some transformations okay so now if you look the graph is now 2 times the sine of x. Now if you recall that is simply a vertical dilation. It's simply a vertical dilation so every basically every y value gets multiplied by 2. Okay so if you think about our range of our original sine function going from negative 1 to 1 right if we do a vertical dilation now our range is from negative 2 to 2 okay so if we do this and I'm gonna walk you through it that's gonna be 2 times the sine of 0 well if you think about the sine of 0 alright the sine of 0 is simply 0 so 2 times 0 is still 0 but then if we talk about 2 times the sine of pi over 2 remember pi over 2 the sine of pi over 2 is 1 2 times 1 is 2 so that's where we stretch out our range from 1 to 2 then we jump down to pi that's going to be 2 times the sine of pi again 2 times 0 is simply 0 we jump down to 3 pi over 2 2 times the sine of 3 pi over 2 that's remember the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 we're at the bottom of the unit circle 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 and then finally we finish back up at 2 pi which is back at the original starting point so basically that's 2 times 0 which is 0 okay so if we were to graph that the same thing exists it's just now we end up stretching out the values of pi over 2 which becomes 2 pi is still 0 3 pi over 2 now it drops to negative 2 2 pi becomes 0 and I want to emphasize we're not drawing straight lines we're drawing curves Okay, some of you on your quizzes and your tests like to draw straight lines. Okay, we're drawing curves. Sine and cosine are curves, not straight lines. So just make sure when you're drawing the graphs of sine, cosine, tangent, and then cosecant, secant, tangent, make sure you're drawing curves instead of straight lines. Alright, so we want to talk about completing the table for the five key points for sine, cosine, and tangent. This just comes straight from the unit circle. Okay, straight from the unit circle here. And so if you think about, we're talking about the sine of zero. Remember the sine, let's talk about our y values for every coordinate. The sine of zero, if we zone in here, the sine of zero is zero.
Then when we jump to pi over 2, that's 1. When we jump to pi, okay, that jumps back to 0. You drop down, that's negative 1. And then finally, 2 pi is 0. Let's swap to cosine. Remember, cosine is the x coordinates. And so when we talk about 0, that has a value of 1. The cosine here, the x coordinate is 0. Pi jumps to negative 1. 3 pi over 2 actually drops to 0. And then 2 pi drops to 1. Now, it gets interesting when you talk about tangent. Remember, tangent is sine over cosine, and this sets up nice. Remember, if you just look at, let's look at these two. If I do 0 divided by 1, well, that's 0. But remember, if I do 1 divided by 0, sine over cosine, that's undefined. And when we talk about the graph of tangent, that's going to create a vertical asymptote, and we'll get into that later. Remember, 0 over negative 1, that becomes 0. If negative 1 over 0, that's undefined, which creates a vertical asymptote in our graph. And then finally, 0 divided by 1 is 0. Now, we'll get into this later, but what you have is you have cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Cosecant is the inverse of sine. Secant is the inverse of cosine. Cotangent is the inverse of tangent. Okay? And so what we figure out is if we're talking about cosecant, okay? Cosecant, remember, remember that um, remember that sine is essentially, okay, essentially sine is zero over r. Cosecant when you talk about this, it's going to have a vertical asymptote at zero, and we'll get into this later. Okay, cosecant has a vertical asymptote at zero, and then, but if you talk about pi over two, remember pi over two, the sine is one, and so if you talk about the inverse of that, the cosecant of pi over two is also one, and then finally, we've got also that the cosecant of pi is the vertical asymptote it means it's undefined and then finally after that what we have is the cosecant of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 it matches up with the original sign and then cosecant of 2 pi is vertical asymptote okay and we'll get more into that later on Okay, but just remember that cosecant is the inverse of sine. Okay, so if the sine, um, if the sine is zero, the inverse is going to be a, a vertical asymptote. It's going to be undefined. Same thing if you talk about the uh, secant. Everywhere secant is the inverse of cosine. So everywhere we see cosine has a value of zero, that's going to have a vertical asymptote. It's going to be undefined. And then finally, same thing that happens here. If the secant, if the cosine is one, the secant is also one. If the cosine is negative one, the secant is also negative one. And then finally, if again, if the cosine is one, the secant is one. Now cotangent, okay, they obviously kinda they follow the same pattern, they swap as a sign. So if you have zero as a tangent, it means you're gonna have a vertical asymptote for the cotangent. If you have a undefined or a vertical asymptote for the tangent, you're gonna have a zero for the cotangent. Oh, sorry, actually you're gonna have a one. All right, because remember, the cotangent, hold up, so if, if the tangent's undefined, that's 1 divided by 0, then if you do cosine over sine, sorry, this should be 0, okay, let's correct that, cotangent is defined as, and that's a good point, 
cotangent is defined as cosine over sine okay so let's take a look at pi over 2 if you look at pi over 2 the cosine over sine is 0 divided by 1 okay 0 divided by 1 is 0 so then when you do the cotangent of negative 1 divided by 0 that's a vertical asymptote it's undefined when you do the cosine or the cotangent which is cosine over sine that's 0 and then when you do the cosine of 1 divided by 0 there's a vertical asymptote okay alright so I want to verify those with you today um, what we'll do is we'll talk about dilations later uh, but now from here on what I want you to do is go through and work those examples that you have at the back of your packet we've talked about how to graph the sine function when I get back tomorrow we'll talk about how to graph the cosine um, the cosine function on a two-dimensional plane and then you'll kinda see the correlation between the two